Hello everyone, this is Bill Apter for the Apter Chat here at the Cauliflower Alley reunion, the 51st year. And Larry the Axanic, how many years have you been coming here? Well, I know I started out about 14 or 15 years ago. Yeah. And uh, that was in California. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Kurt was with me at that time. I remember. And we had a great time. Luthes, of course, was there, and he's a great friend of mine. Yeah, mine too, actually, as you know. Red Bastien was there, right. good friend of mine. Right. Nick Bockwinkel was there, good friend of mine, yeah. plus a, another couple hundred. But uh, it was great the first time, and I was, I was overwhelmed by what they do and what they uh, attempt to do to raise money for needed things. And uh, it was a great opportunity for me now, and I'm as enthusiastic now as I was. With I, you never lose your enthusiasm for anything, because I, you know, I see you once or twice a year at some of these events. And what keeps you going and motivated for this all the I, I time? No, I've always been that way. I, I've, you know, I, I raced in the Winnipeg race, uh, 500 mile snowmobile race. I never knew that. Yes, and uh, in below zero weather, cold, windy, and I raced twice, finished twice, and what kept me going? I don't know. There's something that's uh, built inside that says you've got to win, you've got to keep moving, and you, you that's the way it is. During my first marriage my uh i'm a city guy and my uh sicilian father-in-law decided to tea he lived in upstate new york tried to teach me how to drive a snowmobile and i went through his fence very quickly that was the last time i was ever on a snowmobile uh, yeah. well uh, uh maybe i can help you out there they they put handlebars on them like bicycles and, i know and, and you got to steer in the direction you go now whether you uh, weren't in tune with the machine you didn't know what you were doing or uh, some other situation that... I overdosed on Jerry Lewis movies growing up. That's really what it was. You're kidding. Yeah. No, not at all. Uh, he That's was okay. why. I give him a five. That's <laughs> I like that. I like that. So tell me, uh, uh, who are some of the people that you've seen this trip that uh, you haven't seen in a while and was good reuniting with? Well, there's some of the guys from the WWE, you yeah, know, yes. uh, I, I don't get that way very much anymore. Right. And uh, I've seen uh, uh, Nick Bockwinkel's two brothers were yes. here. And his wife, Darlene. And, and his wife, Darlene. Uh, one of his brothers is from California and the other one's from uh, uh, Tucson, Arizona. Yeah. And uh, that, was, that was fun to be with them. And it's just fun to come back every year and see the new people, see the old people. This is my first time, you believe that? I've been in the business 50 years, and this is my first one. Why? It's a long story. <laughs> we don't have enough video on the memory card yeah. for that. Uh, I'm going to ask you a final question, though. They renamed the Bologna Blowout the Bockwinkle Blowout yeah. now. So it, if I could ask you, what was the one thing that made Nick Bockwinkle that great friend to all of us, because I knew him for 35, 40 years. Uh, if you could pinpoint uh, the qualities about him that made him different than everybody else in the business. Well, not different than everybody else, but he had a good quality. Uh, he, he'd become a good friend of our family, yeah. and he, he took my kids boat riding and uh, uh, snowmobiling and skiing. And so it's a long story, and he always was a gentleman, That's and he always represented the business great. He always looked good. He always dressed good. He looked like a champion. He, like Luthes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And uh, uh, we had no more wa Walmart walkers in, in our business, <laughs> but... but the, they seem to be coming back, drifting back. Yep, yep. And uh, so I think if you're in a profession and you want to be a, a good in your profession, do that, but also you should look nice when, Absolutely. It, when you I, raise that. I know I mentioned this last question, but there's one last, last question. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about your grandson. Uh, he called me today. Yeah. Were you in there? No, I wasn't Oh, there. you missed that. You missed the classic. I wasn't there. But he called me on my phone when I was on up on the podium. Yeah. And he said, I said, hold it, everybody. This is my WWE grandson calling me. 
And then, and then he like Kurt, and then he kept calling me back. He knew where I was. It just uh, aggravated me and pulled some crap on me, you know. But oh, of course, of course. Yeah. So of anyway, uh, that's we, a Hennig. Yeah, and, <laughs> and you know uh, about those twenty-five kids I mentioned that that we had grandkids. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I gave them their names today. Uh, at that uh, at the eight, seminar yeah uh, it was uh, one two three four five all the way to 25 wow unbelievable <laughs> unbelievable the legacy of the Hennigs continue Bill after did you get that I did actually but we don't know if they got it one two three four five until when you get to 25 stop that's it that's it so the legacy of the Hennigs continued. Thank you so much. It was great for our, our little talk show set here, courtesy of the Gold Coast Hotel. Yeah, right? and uh, it, you might say uh, it was my idea. I know. He sat us here. I said, let's stand up. He said, no. <laughs> for the after chat, Larry the Axe Hennig yeah. and wonderful Willie Bill After will see you at the matches.